did you know that the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of the dinosaurs, had one of the most powerful bites in the history of our planet? Imagine this, a T-Rex could chomp down with a force of up to 12,800 pounds per square inch. That's equivalent to the weight of three small cars. In fact, a T-Rex could crush a car with its jaws. A T-Rex's jaw was so strong that it could crush bones with ease. It's like having a hydraulic press for a mouth. It's massive serrated teeth were up to 12 inches long and could slice through flesh and bones like a hot knife through butter. So how did the T-Rex develop such an incredibly powerful bite? Well, its skull was specially designed for maximum strength. Its jaws were robust and muscular, and its skull had thick, reinforced bones that could withstand tremendous forces. This allowed the T-Rex to take down large prey and feast on their meat. But there's another interesting fact. Despite its powerful jaws, the T-Rex had a limited ability to chew. Instead, it used its teeth to tear flesh and swallow in large chunks. That's why scientists believe that the T-Rex was more of a look and swallow kind of predator rather than a chewer. Did you know that the fastest dinosaur of all time was the magnificent Ornithomimus? Often referred to as bird mimic dinosaurs, roamed the Earth around 70 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. These remarkable creatures were incredibly swift, boasting amazing speed and agility. But just how fast were they? Hold on tight, because Ornithomimus could reach speeds of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour, 60 to 80 kilometers. Imagine witnessing a dinosaur sprinting along next to your car on the highway. Insane! However, it's also worth mentioning that another famous dinosaur, the Velociraptor, also deserves recognition in the speed department. Well, not as fast as the Ornithomimus, the Velociraptor was no slouch either. It could still dash around at an impressive speed of roughly 25 miles per hour. That's 40 kilometers. To put things into perspective, if you were to race against an Ornithomimus or a Velociraptor, you wouldn't stand a chance. The Velociraptor is twice the speed of a human and the Ornithomimus nearly four times faster. Terrifying. So the Ornithomimus, the fastest dinosaur that ever roamed the earth, closely followed by the infamous Velociraptor. It's incredible to think about how fast these dinosaurs were. I feel sorry for whatever they were trying to eat. Do you know what the largest dinosaur ever discovered is? Let me introduce you to the mighty Argentinosaurus. It was a whopper. We're talking about 100 feet long and 100 tons. That's about as heavy as 14 elephants. Can you imagine that? Let me put this into perspective. You know, the Brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park. That big fella was about 85 feet long and weighed around 50 tons. So the Argentinosaurus was even bigger than that. I bet you're wondering what this huge dinosaur looked like. Well, it was a long neck sauropod, just like the Brachiosaurus here. But instead of the long front legs and the shorter back legs, the Argentinosaurus had legs that were all about the same size, making it more like a big old tank. And get this, scientists think this massive creature might have been able to stand on its hind legs to reach up to the very tip tops of the trees. Can you imagine seeing a dinosaur that big standing up like a person? Now, let's talk about how they found this giant. It was discovered in Argentina, hence the name, Argentinosaurus. A group of scientists found its bones in the late 80s and early 90s, but it took them years to put all the pieces together. And you know what's even crazier? They still haven't found a complete skeleton. They've only found bits and pieces, but they were able to estimate its size based on the bones that they did find. I reckon it'd be like trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle without all the pieces. Did you know that the Brachiosaurus, one of the largest dinosaurs to have ever roamed the Earth, had a heart that was the size of a car. That's right, a car. The Brachiosaurus, with its long neck and its enormous body, had a heart that was absolutely massive. In fact, it was estimated that its heart weighed around 600 pounds or 270 kilograms. That's about the same weight as a small horse or a fully grown gorilla. To pump blood throughout its gigantic body, the Brachiosaurus needed a heart that was powerful and efficient. Its heart had to be strong enough to circulate blood up its long neck and down its massive tail. But how did such a massive heart function? Well, just like our hearts, the Brachiosaurus heart had multiple chambers. 
The chambers allowed for the efficient flow of oxygen-rich blood to every part of its huge body. Can you imagine having a heart that big? That's insane! But here's another thought. The next time you're out, there you go, Jurassic Park, in the family car, going for a drive, just remember, you could all fit inside a Brachiosaurus's heart. Oh my god! <laughs> there was a time when people believed the Stegosaurus had not just one, but two brains? Yes, you heard me, two brains! But let's find out the truth. Initially, scientists thought that this prehistoric creature had a primary brain in its head, just like any other animal. However, they hypothesized that a second brain was located in an unexpected place, the Stegosaurus's butt. What? This myth spread like wildfire, capturing the imagination of many. The idea was that the additional brain helped coordinate the movement of the Stegosaurus's hind legs, tail, and spiky plates. It sent neurological shockwaves through the prehistoric community. However, as scientific knowledge advanced, researchers began to question this fascinating claim. They conducted intense studies examining fossils using modern imaging techniques to unravel the mystery. The truth turned out to be far less exciting. The small cavity structure in the Stegosaurus's hip area was not a brain at all, but rather an enlargement of the spinal cord known as the sacral enlargement. Scientists now believe that this enlargement served as a nerve center, aiding in the coordination of the hind limbs and the tail. It was an important feature, but not an additional brain. So although the idea of a dinosaur with two brains seemed crazy, the truth is that the Stegosaurus had just one brain located in its head, just like any other animal. What is the smallest dinosaur ever discovered? The Oculodentavis was first discovered in Myanmar in 2019. And at first, scientists thought it was a bird because of its beak. But upon closer inspection, they realized that it was actually a dinosaur, and a teeny tiny one at that. This little guy was only about the size of a hummingbird, and it had a mouth full of razor sharp teeth. That's right, a tiny dinosaur with attitude. But here's the really funny thing about the Ocular Dentavis. It's so small that scientists actually thought it was a fake fossil at first. That's right, they thought someone had just made it up all as a joke. But nope, after some investigation, they realized that it was the real deal. Now, as you can imagine, a dinosaur this small probably didn't pack much of a punch, but it did have one trick up its sleeve. It had eyes that were bigger than its brain. Its eyes were so huge, they took up almost its entire skull. So what was the point of having such big eyes? Well, scientists think that the Ocular Dentavis might have been a nocturnal hunter, using its huge eyes to see in the dark and catch its prey by surprise. But regardless of its hunting tactics, I can't help but laugh at the thought of a dinosaur that's so small, it's almost cute. I mean, can you imagine a T-Rex trying to hunt this thing down? It would be like trying to catch a fly with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Did you know that the iconic velociraptors made famous by Jurassic Park were actually covered in feathers? That's right. These fierce creatures were not the scaly monsters we saw in the Jurassic Park franchise, but rather feathered beauties. Imagine a velociraptor about the size of a turkey covered in a stunning array of feathers. These feathers were not only for looks, but also served several important purposes. They help regulate the dinosaur's body temperature, just like our feathers keep birds warm or cool. Feathers also help velociraptors communicate and display emotions. They could raise their feathers to appear large or change their colors to attract mates or intimidate their rivals. What do you think is the largest carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered? No, nope, it's not the Tyrannosaurus rex. The Spinosaurus, known for its incredible size, was much larger than the famous T-Rex. While the T-Rex was about 40 feet long and stood at 15 feet tall, the Spinosaurus took size to a whole new level. It reached a staggering length of approximately 50 feet and stood as tall as a three-story building. That is huge. Now, what made the Spinosaurus truly unique was its iconic sail-like structure on its back. This sail made up of long spines could grow up to seven feet tall. That's taller than me. 
Scientists believe this sail served multiple purposes. It may have helped regulate the dinosaur's body temperature, acted as a display to attract mates, or even played a role in swimming. But that's not all. The Spinosaurus had an impressive set of jaws, filled with sharp, cone-shaped teeth, perfect for catching fish and other prey in the rivers and lakes nearby. Yes, you heard it right, this massive dinosaur was not just a land predator, but also a swimmer, spending a significant amount of its time in the water. This is a highly debated idea among scientists, however. Let me know what you think. So, the Spinosaurus, with its enormous size, sail-like structure, and aquatic lifestyle, stands as a true marvel of prehistoric times. Its size, surpassing even the legendary T-Rex, makes it an awe-inspiring and terrifying creature that once ruled the Earth. Did you know that the Pterodactyl that majestic flying creature that we associate with dinosaurs is not actually a dinosaur. That's right, when I discovered this fact, I couldn't believe it. But here's the deal, while the pterodactyl lived during the same time as the dinosaurs, it's not actually a member of the dinosaur club. Think of it being the cool cousin who hangs out with the dinosaurs, but has a slightly different ancestry. Pterodactyls were actually a type of flying reptile, not a dinosaur. They belonged to a group called pterosaurs, which were a whole different branch of the family tree of prehistoric creatures. The pterodactyl, or pterosaur as it's scientifically known, takes center stage as one of the most famous prehistoric creatures ever to grace our planet. Pterodactyls were true pioneers of the sky. They had hollow bones, a bit like modern birds, which made them lightweight and perfect for flight. And those wings, they were made of thin, leathery membrane, creating a magnificent spectacle in the ancient skies. So the next time you're watching Jurassic World Dominion and you see a pterodactyl, don't confuse it with the dinosaurs. Give it a round of applause for being a flying reptile that ruled the skies long before birds existed. Did you know dinosaurs were full of air? Scientists believe that dinosaurs were full of air, literally. They think they had air sacs. Imagine a T-Rex or a Triceratops for a moment, spread all throughout their bodies. These air sacs were like extra pockets of air, similar to the ones we have in our lungs, but much larger. These air sacs serve several important purposes for dinosaurs. First, they made the dinosaurs lighter, allowing them to move more easily. Just like the air-filled balloons we play with, these air sacs help reduce the overall weight of the dinosaurs, making it easier for them to walk, run, and even fly. Second, these air sacs were like built-in air conditioning systems. Dinosaurs could regulate their body temperature by filling or emptying these air-filled chambers. This was especially helpful for larger dinosaurs like the mighty Brachiosaurus, as it allowed them to stay cool in the scorching prehistoric climate. Lastly, these air sacs played a crucial role in dinosaur vocalization. Just like we use our lungs and vocal cords to speak or make sounds, dinosaurs utilized their air sacs to produce deep roars and resonating calls and unique noises to communicate with each other. So next time you watch Jurassic World Dominion, remember the dinosaurs had air sacs, these incredible adaptions that made them lighter help them control their body temperature and allow them to communicate in their prehistoric world.